Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So I'm gonna run through this video. I'm gonna show finding Marshallian demands, indirect utility function, Hicksian demands, and then expenditure function for this utility function with these prices. Notice I phrase this a little bit different than I do typically on problem set. Okay, so anyway, what we need to do for finding our Marshallian demands is we need to write out our consumer's utility maximization problem. Okay, so write out the utility maximization problem. What the, what the consumer is gonna do is they're trying to maximize utility by choosing the amount of good one, the amount of good two, subject to some constraint. And so this is the objective function, this is the constraint. Okay, so I'm gonna take my partial with respect to good one, partial with respect to good two, get my tangency. Once you've got the tangency, you're gonna plug that into the constraint That'll give you your optimal demands, which you plug into the objective function, and that'll be part B, the indirect utility function. Okay, so first let's walk through these partials. So this is gonna be partial with respect to good one is gonna be one half, x one to the minus one half, minus just lambda. Then right here, we're gonna have one half, x two to the minus one half, minus two lambda, or lambda two from this two right here. Because the price of good one was one, and the price of good two was two. And then the constraint is just x1 plus 2x2 two, two is equal to m. All right, so this is our MRS. This divided by, here's our marginal utility of one, here's our marginal utility of two, so this divided by this is our MRS. This over here is our price ratio, one half. All right, so, but I mean, you could solve this for lambda, you could solve that for lambda, and you could set them equal, and you'll get this. So let's just skip to here. This is going to be x1 to the minus one half, x2 to the minus one half is equal to one half. Okay, so I can just get, I can recognize by our exponent rules. So something to a negative exponent in the numerator, it's the same as that same base, but in the denominator. So that allows me to flip this over. Then solving, I can just solve for x1 in terms of x2. All right, so it's gonna be x1 is equal to four x2. And then what I can do is I, this is my tangency condition. I'm gonna plug that into the constraint. So the constraint was just our budget constraint, okay. So I'm actually gonna do this twice. So I'm gonna do this once, substituting for x1. I'm gonna write in four x2 instead of x1, plus two x2 is equal to m, and I'm gonna get x2 is equal to m over six. Cool. Then I'm gonna substitute for two, and I'm gonna to have to write in, instead of x2, I'm gonna write x1 over four. So I'll do this here. So it's gonna be x1 plus two x1 over four is equal to m. Where is this coming from? Remember, that's our budget constraint, right? That's our constraint. So I'm substituting in the tendency into the constraint. That's what that's doing. Then I do something a little bit different. Right? So, so we got this, this is x1 plus x1 over two. Cool, so we've got three, or three x1 over two is equal to m. And now I've written this as uh, x1, my dem Marshallian demand is gonna be four sixth m. Why did I do that? Well, it's gonna be easier. It's gonna make our life easier in the future. So I've written this as 4 sixth m, although like if this was an exam question, as if you wrote this as, if you wrote this as two thirds, it, x1 is equal to two thirds m, like, of course you've got that right. I wouldn't take off points. Uh, here I've just decided to write, uh, I've decided to multiply top and bottom by, uh, by one written cleverly, by two over, uh, two over two. Okay. Now we're gonna find the indirect utility function and we'll start to see like why I did that. So to find the indirect utility function, you're gonna take your Marshallian demands, you're gonna plug them into the objective. Notice what you do. So when you're first solving, you get your tangency condition, then you plug your tangency condition into, into the constraint, then you get your demands, then you plug your demands into the objective to get the value function. In this case, the value function is the indirect utility function that I was asking for right here, indirect utility function. Okay, so sorry for all the scrolling. It's actually driving my, hopefully it's, it's actually probably driving me more, more uh, uh, probably annoying me worse than it's annoying other people. But anyway, so here's our indirect utility function. I'm gonna evaluate my original utility at my optimals. Cool, so we've got this. Here's my demand, my Marshallian demand for good one, my Marshallian demand for good two. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of clever algebraic manipulation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, oh look, I can take the square root of four and pull that outside of the parentheses done. Then I've got this quantity plus this quantity is three of those quantities. Okay. Then I'm going to say, wait a second, I actually want to clean this up a little bit. And I can do that if I pull this three back inside. It's easier to see from here going the other way. So 
if I take the square root of 9, that's 3. And then everybody knows I can pull that outside of the parentheses. But I can also bring it back in. So now I've got 9 6, But that's cool because I can write this as 3m over 2, uh, square root of that whole thing. And this is my indirect utility function. OK, cool. So we've got that. That's good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my expenditure minimization. Or I'm going to do my expenditure minimization. So now the consumer is trying to minimize their their expenditure on good one plus their expenditure on good two subject to this constraint of hitting some level of utility they're choosing good one they're choosing good two all right so this is the objective this is the constraint i'll take the partial with respect to oh shoot i wrote this as like x and y this should be like the partial with respect to x1 partial with respect to x2 here put x and y great uh anyway so this looks the same it's the same problem right I mean, sorry, it's the same tendency condition, right? So it's going to be like one half as our price ratio is equal to our MRT, our margin rate of substitution. Cool. So this is going to boil down to the same thing. If we're using the same prices and we're using the same utility function, the, expen the expenditure minimization problem and the utility maximization problem are going to give us the same tangency condition. And we're going to do the same thing with it. We're going to plug the tangency condition into the constraint. But now the constraint looks different. Now it's going to be the utility function minus this base level of utility. OK, so I'm going to take my tangency condition. And I'm going to substitute, in this case, for x1. So I'm going to get 4x2 to the 1 half plus x2 to the 1 half is equal to our utility level. I'm going to do the same trick as before. I'm going to say, wait a second, I can take the square root of 4 pull that outside that's going to be 2 times this quantity plus 1 times that quantity is 3 times that quantity. Of course that quantity is the square root of 2 or of x2. Okay and then just solving for x2 this is going to give me my Hicksian demand for good 2. Cool then I can do the same substitution but for replacing good 2 with good 1 it's actually got to be to solve for good 2 this is going to be x1 over 4. All right, and I'm going to do something similar again. I'm going to say rather than just having this 4 here, I can pull out this 1 half. Square root of 4 is 2. Great. So I've got one of these plus half of these. Or I've got three halves of this quantity. Or solving, here's my Hicksian demand for good 1. 4 ninths times this uh, uh, utility level squared. OK, once we've, got our, once we've got our demands, we can plug them into our objective. And that'll give us our expenditure function. So the expenditure function is going to be evaluating our expenditure at the optimal solutions for x1 and x2. OK, so I'm going to have 4 ninths uh, u squared plus 2 times 1 ninth u squared. And then solving, uh, I'm going to have 2 thirds u squared is equal to e. And then sometimes in the problem set, I like reminding us that this is going to be related to the inverse of this. So I just mentioned that. That's cool to see. That's not something that we'll worry further about. I just think it's kind of cool to, cool to notice. OK, very good. I don't think I had anything else in here. Nope, I don't. Sorry. All right.